Does a hitman's wife need a bodyguard? Stupid question, but it makes for a good time. We start things off with an award ceremony. No, not the Oscars. The AAA rated Bodyguard of the Year Award. The host announces the favorite nominee with the best client list, best driving, best gun skills, and even the best hair. That's right, it's this slick driver, Michael Bryce, aka the guy who plays Deadpool. Later, to no one's surprise, the award goes to my personal hero. Me? Michael Bryce. Oh, the crowd erupts in a standing ovation, but just as he starts his speech, Samuel L. Jackson? Samuel L. Jackson too? No, that's the lovable hitman and arch nemesis slash frenemy of Michael, Darius Kincaid. We're in a dream sequence, aren't we? <laughs> Why couldn't you protect me? Tick -tock Finally, it's over. Michael awakens in therapy. He shares that he's been having the same nightmare. Just once. Oh, sweetie, that's fine. A night. Oh, well, goddamn. The session continues, and Michael continues to blame Darius for ruining his life. You see, Darius took out his best client, Kurosawa, causing him to lose his AAA status bodyguard rating. Also, there's a bodyguarding committee, and they revoked Michael's license for protecting a hitman. That's right, the two teamed up to save the world from Gary Oldman. Anyway, Michael has to face the committee in two weeks to get his license back. His therapist, Joanne, infers that he's got validation issues because of his daddy. I don't have validation issues. I have a licensing issue. Touche. Why don't you go on a vacation? Get your mind off bodyguarding. There's not like a global thing going on where you can't travel. <laughs> Michael needs to think about it, but does take intrigue in Joanna's last suggestion. You could always stop being such a little baby boy. Joanne, this is great. I feel like we're making really great progress. Here. Joanne agrees, but her eyes betray her true feelings. Though, she has great news. You've graduated therapy. Remember, no more bodyguarding. No bodyguarding. No guns, but he gets to keep his trusty penknife. Very cool. Congratulations on graduating, my guy. Jesus Christ! In the end, Jesus is always the answer. We cut to a rally in Greece. Two years of sanctions against the nation has caused civil unrest and nationwide strikes. Because economics. I don't know, money is tight right now. The head of the EU, Walter, makes a speedy exit. Unfortunately him, not speed enough. We are then brought to Athens, Greece, where mass riots have spread. This guy, Aristotle Papa Dupa, pa, eh, pa, Papa Johns, anyway, he monologues while looking at the fireworks outside. He recalls the Greek civilization's glory days. How to give the world art, science, culture. Oh, and don't forget this movie. Thank you, Greece. Very cool. Oh look, it's Walter. Looks like he got the Fifty Shades of Grey treatment. Aristotle demands he reverses the economic sanctions, but... There is no way. It was a democratic vote. Okay, okay, that's how it is. Want to see my bag? And that's how the Greeks get her done. Let's give them a breather and check back in with Michael, who's now enjoying Italy. He's so proud of himself after graduating therapy. How cute. But just as he's finally starting to find peace, chaos has found him once more. Whomstv are you? Sonia, Darius' wife, introduces herself and explains how Darius has been taken by the Mafia. How did you find me? <laughs> Understandable. Sonia needs Michael's help, but he'd much rather live out his dreams in peace. I am gonna put my on and I am gonna f your dreams. Oh well, goddamn. That's just uncalled for. Your mouth needs an exorcism. I, for one, am willing to explore those depths. Apparently, Darius specifically asked for Michael Breeze. Breeze? I thought it was Bryce. Whatever, there's no time to spare. The two get to moving. The pair drive off and she asks Michael for an assist. I'm not doing guns right now. Ah, he's on a gun fast. He takes the wheel while Sonia shoots her load. Who wrote this? She holds them off just long enough to reach a cliff. Can we not do that? Whee! Michael has no choice but to yeet himself off as well. They find an underwater cave and get some breathing room. <laughs> Sonia and her husband were going on their honeymoon. A road trip through Italy, but her cucaracha, that's what she calls him, fled. Nice outfit. Darius then calls her asking for help, and that's pretty much it. Also, quit trying to have a baby. May God help us all. And in so many different places, mm. uh, positions. Uh. Yes, indeed. Uh, God is everywhere. An uncomfortable and embarrassed Michael has to listen to everything. <gasps> Amen, sisters. Going to be such a good mother. I can't imagine anyone better. Sonia straps up, and Michael settles for pepper spray, and they head out to Darius. But before that, in Zigvr, in Croatia, a shady transaction is ongoing. The actual buyer hides in the shadows as they proceed with a demonstration. The seller protects his eyes while explaining how data junctions are encased in tungsten carbide, a very hard material. 
The only thing harder is waking up in the morning. Also, Dial. these data junctions are spread throughout Europe. He then easily attaches a tool to upload his hacker virus. My virus. My virus. And just like that. Bye bye. That was impressive and Aristotle thinks so too. Unfortunately for them, there can be no witnesses. But first, vaping. Ah! Rip in peace. In the morning, the aftermath of the attack has attracted the attention of the media and the interval. Agent Bobby O'Neill called in Superintendent Crowley, who's kind of pissed. Bobby dragged her out here to show off the hacker man's corpse. Bobby's informant, Carlo, warned him about the cyber attack. Crowley interrupts and reprimands him for dealing with unsanctioned criminal informants. Bobby counters, he's sick of Europe. And the only thing you people do is watch soccer. At least in Europe, they call it football, because our football is hand egg. Anyway, he insists that they let him do what he does back in Boston, work with bad guys to catch badder guys. <laughs> I really have a way with words. We learn that this incident was just a trial run and Carlo the informant has the next coordinates, Italy. The superintendent cooperates and gives Bobby a translator. Her name is... Elso. Asshole? Elso. Okay, yeah, yeah, not much I can, uh, not much I can add to that. Off to Italy they go. Speaking of Italy, we're sent to another one of its cities where Darius is being held. This is Carlo. Yeah, the same one. And he wants to introduce Darius to the... The Butcher of Derasina. Outside, his wife and former bodyguard are rearing to rescue him. Of course, knowing Michael, a frontal assault is out of the question. He prefers the sneaky biggie strategy. Darius asks for his help, so they'll do it his way. No killing, no guns. Boring is always best. I'm Wait, where, where did you go? Sonia walks off and prepares to unveil a woman's greatest weapon. And so, Michael is forced to go solo. He screws with the surveillance and... Well, golly gee. I guess looks can kill. She wrecks havoc on Carlos's base, and with that husband-wife connection, Darius starts his own mayhem. Sonia sticks to her guns while Michael, uh, punches a guy with his own gun, and we won't be needing that. Darius butchers the butcher, and Carlo meets the god of death. Cue the slow-mo for the lover's reunion. Mm. <laughs> Only, why is he here? I believe it's pronounced, thank you. Honest mistake. Baby, what the hell is Michael Bryce doing here? You said, baby, get me Michael Bryce. No, 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 no. You see, he said, get me anyone except Michael Bryce. But baby, didn't he save you? Yeah, but he's a no one as hell. Excuse me, I have 2020 hearing. What? Yeah, we're just gonna head out. As they leave, <laughs> somewhat effective. <laughs> Very effective. Michael explains he's trying to find his spiritual awakening. <laughs> All right, now he's mad. Michael charges after them hurling insults, but then they get abducted. And <laughs> shocking. <laughs> the hitman, the bodyguard, and the con. That's almost the title of the movie. Bobby caught the three responsible for his informant's death. And boy, is he mad. He already knows them all and has dirt. There's Michael with his AAA license revoked, who's still taking clients. Uh-oh, felony. And as far as the couple, well, their combined sentence would likely round down to about a billion years in prison. Fortunately, he's giving them a shot at redemption. A full-scale cyber attack is about to go down, and Carlo was supposed to buy a hard drive containing the coordinates of said attack. So now the gang is going to Portofino instead to do just that. Michael doesn't mind the mission, but he isn't keen on working with the crazy Kincaids. He pleads with Bobby to reconsider. Bobby kindly counters. Okay, Michael's gonna be the bodyguard, Sonia is Carlos's British mistress, and Darius is Darius. Sonia's pissed her honeymoon is getting ruined, but enough of that. What if somebody's upstairs? Good point. Anyway, Bobby has to check a heist on a shipping dock, which may or may not be related, while the trio continue with the plan using this buy money. You try to go with wall. If either you or the money goes missing, I'm going to slap global red notices on all of you. Only Michael is intimidated. He's also tasked with sending updates Bobby's way. Resources are low, but at least they get a car. The boys bicker as Sonia takes it all in. <coughs> on the road, she grills her husband for leaving her on her honeymoon night. Sorry is not enough. Women, am I right? She doesn't believe Darius's I took a job excuse. In the meantime, Michael would love to discuss the merits of wearing seatbelts given Sonia's driving. Do not criticize my wife's driving, mother- Adorable. Sonia hushes them both and announces a realization. She can just ignore all the BS and pretend it's a lovely road trip through Italy. It's still their honeymoon, Darius is still her devoted husband, and Michael is human luggage. No, this is a mission. <laughs> Unlike Greece, this is not a democracy. Sonia wants to focus on conceiving, and that means arousal by sightseeing, shopping, and fine dining. Darius concurs, so Michael has to take the wheel while the couple, oh my god, cut. Later, Michael confronts Darius for lying to Sonia about taking a job. Now how do you know I'm lying? It's like 22 body indications when somebody lies and you exhibited 40. Oh, of course. 
Michael preaches about honesty while Dares threatens to murder him in inventive new ways. Also, I don't take relationship advice from single moms. That is great advice. It's always the single ones. Anyway, Darius needs to borrow Michael's phone, so he gives it up. Sonia witnesses Darius on the phone and believes he's taking another job. And they just completely ignore poor Michael as Sonia goes hysterical. She snatches the phone, but learns that Darius reserved tickets for the opera. Their honeymoon is in full swing. They got the cash, so it's shopping and fine dining time. Does the opera count as sightseeing? Well, it's enough to get Sonia in the mood for some outdoor fun. This has to all be in her imagination, right? <laughs> Wrong. An angry Michael pops out, calling the couple insane. Did you spend all of the money? Come on, they expected us to spend some of it. Defeated, Michael decides to cover it with his life savings. Wish I had some life savings. Relatable. Actually, I think it's time I fix that. Hey guys, today I'm Harry. Not Potter. <laughs> Just kidding. I need these to see. So today we're actually doing Manscaped, which will help me with my hairiness. Manscaped TM. What was that? I'm not supposed to say the TM part. Uh, Manscaped. Um. All right, so here it is. It is very solid, very nice. So turning it on, whoa, it's got a little light. So check this out. If you hold the button three seconds, light turns off. And now we have the trim guards where you actually have two settings. Overall, this thing is a great body trimmer. Feels premium, compact in the hand. The multi-setting trim guards are very convenient to use and the built-in light is a thoughtful design choice. They have other goodies like a nose and ear trimmer, but I'm guessing like me, most of you are concerned with obtaining that extra optical inch downstairs. Use promo code MINUTE20 at checkout for 20% off, free shipping, and two free gifts. That's how we do it. We're back. Michael calls out Bobby. He leaves a message stating that their mission has run off course, and he's traumatized by the couple's noises. <laughs> when, when did this become a horror movie? Who are you talking to, Briss? It's a secret? You were talking to yourself. <laughs> I know that laugh. We cut to Bobby's investigation, and he's found a connection. A corpse with the same wounds as the hacker guy. He wants to know what the stolen goods are, but it's an active crime scene. Time for distraction. Man's chose violence this morning. Whoa, look at this. Last time I saw something like this, Bruce Willis was drilling a hole in an asteroid. Sick reference though, bro. Oh, thanks, bud. Bobby calls Crowley and reports the giant diamond-tipped drill that was stolen. I knew I was onto something about these cyber attacks. You're right, and we have some news as well. Crowley has learned about the mob's impending purchase of data grid coordinates. If this actually turns out to be what you say it is, I will personally- Slob your knob. Okay. The transaction will be in Portofino, as Bobby already knows, and Crowley already has a team on standby. Uh-oh. This means we're en route for a collision course with the Interpol, the mob, and our trio. At the Italian village, the bodyguard escorts his British VIP. My British accent is perfect. E no. Everyone's gonna be fine, though. Darius has got them covered. Though, a security check causes Michael to miss a very important phone call. A panicked Bobby is desperately trying to call off the operation. If Crowley finds out he's been working with the Three Stooges, his ass is grass. Michael eventually goes through security and inside the club recognizes an old client. Let's avoid that. Sonia introduces herself to Vladimir and he doesn't suspect a thing. Meanwhile, Crowley's team monitors the situation. Then Sonia flashes the cash and Vladimir shows her the goods. She reaches for it, but no, 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 no. Vladimir explains how the hard drive and the bracelet are proximity paired. They must not be more than five meters apart for more than 15 seconds or kaboob. I mean, kaboom. Only the buyer's fingerprints can disarm the bracelet. An onlooking Darius is pissed. How to pop this fool. Sonia needs to deliver the briefcase tomorrow in Florence at the Ludovico Gallery Auction. Michael Bryce! Oh no, the ex-client recognized him. This is such good writing. Michael denies his identity, but the others quickly put the pieces together. Vlad already pulled them up on his phone. He finds his very sauce and there's more to stoke his fire. Carlo typically prefers younger, maybe 30s women at the most. But never this old. Oh no, not like this. An enraged Sonia stands up, discards her British persona, and Bleep, 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 bleep. Finally realizing that it's a setup, Vladimir tries to get the briefcase. But I think a shootout is in order. Darius? And now, Sonia goes berserk. Curly's team scrambles while the club is in chaos. Michael sends a much needed assist and Sonia unleashes Hal. Then, the bodyguard explores his kinky side while the hitman covers his wife. Triple A, my ass. Interpol begins storming the club just as Sonia's bracelet starts beeping. Good thing Michael's there and Sonia can tend to herself. A round at the bar proves Michael's no-gun policy is effective as Sonia cleans up her mess. The authorities are late as usual, but not this guy. Uh-oh, bodyguard time. Michael heroically takes the shot. Sonia looks Michael to the dock where she rendezvous with Darius. Sometime later, Darius offers some final words for Michael's sea burial. Rest in peace. Oh, right. Michael wore Kevlar. Why was he sleeping then? Why do movies do this? 
Outside the club, Crowley reprimands Bobby for going behind her back, employing two criminals and an unlicensed bodyguard. The trio possess critical evidence, so she orders global red notices for all of them. And the Interpol aren't the only ones after them. ruh -roh. Back in Athens, Aristotle's informed of the incident, the Interpol's involvement, and of Carlo's death. He wants her lovable trio brought in and the briefcase retrieved. The three carry on with their mission and set up in Florence. First, Sonia gives Michael painkillers for the chest that saved her life. The buyer they're looking for is, of course, Aristotle. His security detail impresses Michael. Is that Magnuson? He won best AAA-rated bodyguard three years in a row. Apparently he has confidence like a panther. Y'all have awards? Ha, <laughs> hitmen have our own kind. It's called lethal injection. Darius gets curious, so he goes to check out Michael's idol. Instead, he spots Zento, a rival hitman and perhaps anime enthusiast. Aristotle finally steps out and Michael does not respect the drip. That looks like Louis Vuitton crossed with a shower curtain. You have other things to worry about, Michael. Zento spots a trio and is ordered to engage. Zento, gun! Whoa, thank God Darius shouted gun. The gang gets to moving while Magnuson takes charge. They don't know we have five possible escape routes. They have five possible escape routes. Oh, they've made it down, but don't have a ride. Whoa, those painkillers are kicking Michael's ass. Meanwhile, Darius is trigger happy as usual. They're cornered, but Darius provides enough cover for Michael's hot wiring skills. Magnuson has likely spotted me and therefore knows all my tricks. I don't recognize any of these losers. Shoot the kill. Luckily, Michael, my God. Luckily, Michael starts the car just in time. He takes off and his driving skills leave everyone shook, even earning him approval from the Kincaids. <laughs> Oh, we dreamin'. Were those really painkillers? Darius checks on his bodyguard, but he's down. Then, thanks to plot armor, Sonia walks through the van scratch-free, and they drive off while Michael does his best impression of baggage. <laughs> Sonia starts accepting that their honeymoon has gone to shit. Then, Magnuson closes in. He offers a ceasefire. Give me the suitcase and we'll call it even. Sure. Look at me. Oh, goddamn. That was dope. However, Darius's celebration is cut short as Magnuson calls in a helicopter. My god, it's Zento, and he's got a grenade launcher. Though, explosions aren't enough to bring down the Kincaids. Darius fires back as Zento is forced to retreat under the bridge. Shortly after, he comes back for an encore, but this time Darius gets things done. Not bad, right Michael? We then cut to Aristotle. Now aware of the identities of the people that stole his briefcase, he wants them captured alive. Back to our trio, Sonia sings a lullaby for Michael. This wakes him up, and Sonia reveals the pills were lithium. Michael is furious and confronts the crazy couple. He then screams how Sonia would make a terrible mother. You apologize right now, mother... At this point, Michael doesn't care. Dear worst. Meanwhile... Hey, you alright? Aw, she's hurt. Now alone, Michael reflects on the bullets he took from the couple before asking the heavens for a sign. Hmm, how about another sign? Uh, oh, jeez. Okay, okay, I hear you. He walks back and excuses his earlier outburst. I accept your apology. Not apologizing. With the gang at wit's end, Michael decides it's time for some help. And he knows just the guy. Michael is stunned as he stands before a doorbell. This is my father's house. I haven't talked to him since I lost my license. How could I? He's the greatest bodyguard who ever lived. Thank you. Inside, Darius is amused at all the AAA awards that Michael's father has on display. They eventually meet him, and Michael is immediately ashamed about his licensing issue. He's sorry for being a disgrace. Then, God shows forgiveness. Here you are, my son, and this is your home. Darius is flabbergasted, speechless at the revelation of Michael's lineage. Can you just let me have this moment? But man, I know, he's a legend. That's weird for you, but to me, he's just papa. No, I'm freaked out because... Because his voice is so deeply rich and it's Tim no, Sound, the published author? Alrighty, let's just put a pin in that for now. Moving on. Nice to meet you, Mr. Breeze father. Michael Sr. welcomes his son's guests and helps Sonya out with the explosive bracelet. Preparations are made for its removal, and he'll also be providing a safe house. More importantly, When the f*** are you gonna tell me your dad was black? Stepdad, actually. And before their argument escalates, Michael Sr. invites them to some food. A nice dinner montage follows. It's all fun and games until... The gelato arrives. Michael is shook and has to walk off. Michael Sr. explains that gelato is one of his triggers. You see, Michael has mommy issues. One day at an amusement park, Michael got some gelato while a 290-pound Italian man smashed her. And not in the fun way. Ever since, Michael blames himself. Darius laughs it off, but Sonia actually has a heart underneath those bosoms. Mmm, milky. She goes to comfort a crying Michael. Sonia can empathize with him, because apparently her mother got eaten by a shark. Relatable. If I just ordered peach gelato a minute sooner, she'd, be, she'd still be alive. True. Very true, my guy. After, the pair head back to some good news. His father's contact can for sure take care of Sonia's bracelet, while he sorts everything out with Interpol. Then, the married couple give them some privacy. Michael Sr. apologizes for the gelato and lifts his son's spirits. You're gonna be a hero. His father is going to talk to the review board about his license. Michael's future looks bright. On his way out, his dad even lends him the Jaguar. The Jag. The trio drive to a safe house and they finally have a moment of peace. 
Darius takes the opportunity to confess to Sony about lying on their honeymoon, but... So anyway guys, I was thinking I could start a new agency with my dad. They're carried on a boat towards a massive castle. Inside, they're face to face with their villain counterparts. And Aristotle makes his dramatic entrance. Aristotle Papadopoulos. Oh, they've already met. You made me realize that there is something I care about more than gold. Something? Okay. Someone. Yeah, in that movie too. Same actors. Aristotle has missed her. Flashback time. We're brought back to Monaco where Sonia's been conning wealthy men, but after meeting Aristotle, she's realized there's more to life. Art, literature, dance, and passion. Unfortunately, Sonia's lessons in life are cut short when she fell from Aristotle's mega yacht. She later woke up with amnesia, but now with Aristotle next to her, she remembers everything. You cured me. Yeah, Darius is pissed. Sonia is set free as they have a lot of catching up to do. Meanwhile, the hitman and bodyguard are dragged away to the interrogation chamber. Then, Aristotle removes Sonia's bracelet and shows her a nursery. Her maternal instincts are loving the vibe. In the torture chamber, Michael ponders whether or not Sonia has been conning Darius this whole time. Darius is speechless at the notion. Then, they're interrogated by interrogators. Naturally, Darius says nothing, so... Michael, on the other hand, is more than willing to spill the beans. So, for no good reason at all, he's off the hook. Literally. Time for Darius to make a move. Kick leading to a choke. Very nice. Feeling uninspired, Michael also goes for a tried and true chokerino. Back to the reunited lovers, Aristotle confesses he hasn't moved on from his one true love. He apologizes for showing her the nursery, considering her condition. My what? He reveals that Carla was his associate and he caught Darius at a fertility clinic, buying fresh eggs. So, Aristotle assumed her baby maker was broken. Uh oh. Alarms are set off as the boys move out to rescue Sonia. Michael voices his skepticism on Sonia's amnesia while Darius retrieves some guns. Sonia's condition reminds Michael of something, but he can't quite pinpoint it. <laughs> ah, my ears! Don't shoot guns inside of a cave, man! Noted. Darius and Sen goes medieval on Aristotle's goons before Michael recalls what he was thinking about. Overboard! Kurt Russell, Goldie Hawn. She gets amnesia. Incredible reference, Michael. Very cool. They make it outside as Sonia reveals herself. You think my eggs are rotten? You tried to buy eggs? Baby, you can't buy eggs at a fertility clinic like a grocery store! That mother is lying to you! Unfortunately, Aristotle has wooed Sonia over with the stability of family. She's made her choice. I cry every time. Then, Michael drags a heartbroken Darius to a boat, eventually making their escape. Later, Michael consoles Darius. Maybe it's a triple cross. She's conning Aristotle. Darius has lost hope. If she wants what he can give her, then fine. I'm a hitman shooting blanks. That's why he was in the clinic. His nuts got shot, but he never told Sonia. Fortunately, one of his balls is still in working order. See, this is why you should have been honest. Okay, bye. Darius walks off. The tree was officially dissolved. Whatever. The single life is where it's at anyway, right, fellas? <laughs> Michael makes his way to his father's house to get help. Wait, what's the Jack doing here? You are the dumbest motherfucker. Oh my god. Literally. His dad reveals that he's the head of Aristotle security. How could you? It's time for a lesson, Michael. A triple-A bodyguard puts his client ahead of God, family, and certainly a little disappointment such as yourself. A cruel teacher and an unforgiving father. <laughs> Michael is no threat, so he lets him go. He adds that he's talked to the review board and has barred Michael's license for life. Also, a stain on my legacy. Goddamn, let him breathe. Michael is beaten, but kicks off a rebellious face. Had a boy. And another montage. We watch as our trio struggles on their own while the bad guy admires his giant diamond drill. Feeling reborn, Michael shows up at Darius's bar, ingesting gelato. Michael explains his father's treachery and apologizes to Darius. He admits Darius's ways are better. He wants to be a badass. Just like him. We should eat salt with our noses. Damn, zero to 100 real quick. Though his proposition gets interrupted. Sonia? She warns him about the kill team sent by Aristotle. And Michael was right. She's been faking the amnesia thing. I can't imagine my life without you. Darius takes the opportunity to talk about his nuts. Is this guy nuts or what? <laughs> He proposes they could adopt, and Sonia happily agrees. She notes that he's been such a good father figure for Michael. All the while, Sonia has been snooping around Aristotle's home. She reveals his evil plan to restore Greece by destroying Europe. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Suddenly, Aristotle's men shoot up the bar as Sonia faces Aristotle. Do you think I am stupid? Do you think I haven't seen the film Overboard? Kurt Russell. Damn, the man knows his movies. He declares the cucaracha dead and threatens Sonia. However, no one can kill my cucaracha. To prove her point, easy cleanup. Michael takes the wheel and a car chase ensues. Now that I've lost everything, I have nothing to lose. Michael has reached zen mode. I'm driving without a seatbelt. For once, Darius really values his. Directed by Michael Bay. Just kidding. The duo face a roadblock ahead, but that doesn't scare the new Michael. You gotta live like you're dying. The bazooka misses. They make it past, and now they're alone. But Michael doesn't stop speeding off. Slow down, mother...
maybe don't get rid of seatbelts. <laughs> oh no! Anyway, actually, did he just shoot them both at the same time? Hacker. In the morning, Darius has a heart-to-heart -heart with Michael about his father. Don't let someone you don't share a drop of blood with define you. Then, he shares something groundbreaking and nut-shattering. He got his nuts clipped in Brussels. Brussels? We're transported back to the incident. Michael was protecting some dude when an unknown hitman pulled up. My god, it was Darius, and Michael nut-tapped him. Why would you tell me that? I mean, it's a W for me, but definitely an L for you. Now look here, you- Darius has no answer and admits that Michael is in fact a damn good bodyguard. And he doesn't need a license. Bodyguards protect people, and right now, Europe needs his protection. Michael needs to accept he's unlicensed, so... Oh, I'm unlicensed! And I don't give a fuck! No. You were saying? At Interpol's head office, Michael spills the beans. Sunyan covered Aristotle's plans to drill into the data junction at Viraggio, and he's uploading the virus in an hour. Crowley can't get a warrant in time, but the two of them are willing to take him down. An agent walks in and confirms that drilling is happening at Viraggio. Bobby is the only one close. Crowley instructs him to head for the drill, and as far as the fleeing yacht, she asks the boys what they'll need. Boats, guns, and... Gary. Johan. You boys are gonna get it on with us. What the... We proceed with a classic gear up scene, then go zoom zoom on a speedy boat. Unfortunately, they're easily spotted and level 1 security is deployed. Oh, it's Gary and Johan, the decoys. That was a short but successful roll. And I hope Gary and Johan are okay. The actual duo are slowly making their way to the yacht. Boring. At Viraggio, the Interpol and local authorities surround the drill. Too bad for them, this was their decoy. They're drilling into a sewage line. Bobby reports to Crowley that the location was not Viraggio the town, but Viraggio the ocean trench, which is where Europe's central data junction is located. So what does this mean? The fate of Europe is in the hands of a hitman and a bodyguard. I wouldn't have it any other way. At Viraggio Trench, Aristotle's yacht deploys the sea drill. Inside, he keeps Sonia tied up to witness Europe's demise before she's dumped into the ocean. Outside, the duo infiltrates the yacht. However, they now have to face security level two. But... Not very practical. The drill inches closer to the data junction as the two split up. Let's pretend it's suspenseful and act surprised as they match up with their bad guy counterparts. Magnus and tanks and dismantles Michael's gun while Zento shoots a barrage of bullets at Darius. Michael's fight started one-sided, but that changes now. <gasps> the Honorable Magnuson goes along with the boxing match, but Michael gets a cheeky hit in. <sighs> Magnuson retaliates by giving Michael head. <gasps> Who wrote this? Underneath them, the drilling has started. Michael is pinned down by the handsome and confident Magnuson, and... Slight scratch. Slight splash! Oh. Let's check in with Darius. Uh-oh, it's not looking too good, and he's down to one bullet. On the other hand, Zento has plenty of tricks up his sleeve, including wall hack. Man, that's cute, but I have aimbot. Kiss my... Back to Michael, his pepper spray is super effective. Magnuson is swinging blind. <laughs> Michael finishes things, slamming him into the jukebox until his favorite song comes on. Meanwhile, Aristotle starts uploading the virus as the data junction is fully penetrated. Countdown, six minutes. Sir, there's a package for you. Aristotle takes matters into his own hands and lets his guard kill Sonia. Though, plot armor has something to say about that. Aristotle lights up Darius' hiding place and has him cornered. He finally hits him, but must pause to deliver a one-liner. Say hello to my little fellows. What? Anyway, Michael stops him dead in his tracks. But then suddenly, his daddy appears. He claims he'll help Michael get his license back if he puts the gun down. However, the power of friendship prevails. He's my best friend, my BFF. Aristotle leaps into action. Michael fires, but his dad takes the shot. Darius slices his leg while Michael checks on his dad. Kevlar? We proceed with three separate fights, with lots of jump cuts. Sonia has held her own against a trained guard and even disarms her. Meanwhile, Darius is having a harder time against the billionaire, and Michael is having the fight of his life against his spry father. Those stories about you said you never wore Kevlar. I was just to boost book sales. All three are at a standstill while just three minutes remain. Sonia's fight is close to its end while Darius crawls for his gun. It's a stalemate until a laser hits his big old bald head. Aristotle is ready to gloat, but... We're both don't killable. Now, he's outnumbered. Michael, on the other hand, is held at gunpoint, but... Pen knife's a very versatile tool. No one sees it coming. Oh, come on, man. How do you not see or feel that? Anyway, the virus is about to get uploaded. Thankfully, Michael's dad randomly reveals that he can disable it, but the ship will explode. Oh, all right then. The trio are picked up and reunited. Also, here's some good news. That's right, Michael got his license back. He just needs to sign right here. And it's all thanks to Sonia. My baby Kukaracha, you just signed the adoption papers. You are now our son. I sat through this entire movie for you. So please, click the Manscaped link in the description or pinned comment. Thank you. Also, keep procrastinating and watching my videos. Here's some more. <laughs>